Katrina here from Scrappy Horses. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm sharing a junk journal book sort of project that I did for Paper Dragonfly Creative Challenges. I am a guest designer over there. So come on over and check out that challenge and show us what you can do with the theme in the garden. And you might want to add a dragonfly for a little extra added fun. Now just a little bit about this video before I begin. First of all, there is a journal flip through and there is a link down in the description. You'll also find down in the description everything I used in this video. Now, this video is long for me. I usually don't do videos this long, but there was a lot to cover. What inspired me to actually do the video was the fact that I was working on this journal and there were, I couldn't find directions for it anywhere. And I thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna make it up as I go along and I might as well just make a video while I'm at it. The cuts for this are from Little Scraps of Heaven. And I cut this all on my Cricut before I started what you're going to see me doing on this video. So that catches you up to this point. Let's get started. First, let's take a real quick peek at the papers we're using. They're from Victoria Designs. And here are some of the pockets and tags and different ephemera pieces. Here are the actual pieces. Uh, this is the journal front and back covers. I made them out of cereal box and they are thick. They are four layers of cereal box thick with the designer paper front and back covers on those. So this book front and back cover, they are really thick when you get it all put together. This is a little pocket that's gonna go on the inside of the back cover. Here we have the spine. It is made from one piece of cereal box, some craft paper, and then my designer paper for the inside and the outside of the book. As we go through this, you're gonna see me play with this quite a bit. You're gonna see me folding it over like I am here and just manipulating the spine all the way through the video because I'm slowly but surely trying to break down those fibers to get a nice curve in it. Now this is about as exciting as watching paint dry. So I sped this up very quickly. I put these together with um, double-sided tape and I used the fabric tack glue. If I had this to do over again, I would use Gorilla Glue. Now this video is gonna be full of, I wish I had done this differently because this really was my first book. So you're gonna see me give lots of tips and tricks that I learned along the way. I used that sandpaper just to sand down where the uh, edges didn't meet perfectly. It worked out great. The reason I like fabric tack is because if you don't get it on exactly right, you can peel up like you just saw me do. Had a little overhang there. So again, I just went over it with a little sandpaper and it worked out quite well. Here I'm just making sure that all of my pieces are gonna to fit together, and they do. Um, I went ahead and distressed and inked several of the pieces. Here I am working on the spine piece. This is the uh, one of the decorative, it's the inside actually, the spine, and here's the outside. Coming in with some close to my heart ink. This is an old retired color and I'm just going around the outside in that lovely green and I'm hitting the edges. Now again, let's go back to manipulating that spine. I'm rolling it around a heavy tube. This is a heavy tube. This is not like a, a paper towel tube or anything. I mean, it's heavy and so I rolled it around to get some curvature there. And again, using fabric tack, I wish I'd gone with a heavier glue for this and you're gonna see the reaction later, how this all works out. Again, more distressing and uh, more inking as we go along. 
I have to say, I think that this paper is absolutely beautiful. It's uh, from, I believe, three different sets. And again, it's all linked below. So if you're interested in finding these papers, it's all there for you. Okay, so now I'm beginning to kind of get an idea of how I want to join this together because, again, there were no directions. So I decided that I would go in and score it three quarters of an inch. So here's another tip for you. This is way too thick to do on this scoreboard. But I hate measuring and marking. So what I did is I put it back on the scoreboard, lined up a metal ruler, and now you're gonna see that I'm just gonna run it right along that ruler. Now I'm gonna have to flip my board because I'm right-handed. So I wanted to be sure that I got a nice clean score on this. I'm scoring this so I can get a, number one, a measurement for where the front and back covers are going to butt up against. And secondly, because I'm gonna get just a slight fold on these creases. So I'm gonna crease this around by sort of, well, you're gonna see it here in just a minute. I'm gonna lay my ruler in, butt the ruler up against those lines, and I'm gonna to start to pull Pull the cardstock back towards me and that will give me just a slight bit of a um, of fold here. I'm doing this slowly because I want to break down the fibers slowly on this so that none of my papers crack and the cardstock doesn't, um, doesn't crack on me. And nothing did crack, I, I will say that. I will tell you that the glue pulled away and I had to go in and fix that on several occasions, but it did not crack on me. Here, I'm just working again for more curvature on the spine. So I just wrapped it around a couple of paint bottles. This worked great, I would recommend this. If you want that kind of spine on a book, this worked wonderfully. I set it aside for about 24 hours and I had a nice curve, you'll see it later. These are some wonderful stamps from Casual Fridays and they do have coordinating dies. I usually stamp and then cut, but in this case, I wanted to emboss. So I knew it was gonna come out too clear using the um, Versamark. I wasn't gonna be able to see where to cut. So I went ahead and cut first, and now I am going to stamp my two dragonflies. Um, it comes with a large one and a small one. I really never had much of an affection for dragonflies, but I went down to Midwest and was trail riding, and we were out in a pasture and I was working my horse and there were all these dragonflies flying around us. And my horse was just so amazed with them because we just don't have that many dragonflies where I live um, in the central part of the state. So anyway, uh, I sort of fell in love with them. All right, so I decided on these dragonflies that I wanted to um, put some powder on them and I didn't want to color them. So I used this lovely bronze color, kind of a brown bronze. There's something about embossing that's just so magical, I think. And so it just fit the dragonfly, because I think dragonflies are sort of magical looking too. It's always so fun to watch the shimmer and the sparkle show up as you heat emboss. And there it is, so fun. All right, so 24 hours has passed and here we are and look at this. This is kind of amazing. It is really nice now. But again, I, I warned you this, this hap was going to happen. I didn't know, obviously, when I first did this, it was going to happen, but um, with the magic of editing, I, I knew it was going to happen in the video. So anyway, here I am adding a little bit of glue here, more fabric tack. Now, is this gonna hold? Well, it'll hold the paper, but what's going to happen next is it's gonna start pulling the cereal box layers when I actually apply later. So 
again, I would really recommend Gorilla Glue. I That's what I ended up using and it really held everything so nicely, um, especially on the card, on the cereal box parts, on the heavier card stock. Maybe not so much on the designer paper. That might have held fine um, with just a little E6000, but not the other. I mean, it really takes Gorilla Glue to really get in there. Okay, now what I'm showing you here is that after that curve went in, I definitely had cardstock overhang, cereal box overhang here. So I'm just gonna cut that away very carefully. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna get my sandpaper back out, sand it down a little bit so they meet exactly. And then I'm going to come back in and uh, re-ink that. Now there are some things that, you know, I don't measure usually, I don't like measuring, so I don't measure a lot, but there are some things that bother me. For some reason, the overhang was gonna bother me. If it doesn't bother you, then leave it alone, you know, but if it does bother you, that's the way to remedy that. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure in here and say, okay, here we are. We've got about three quarters of an inch. And I know that's going to be the overhang now on my front and back book covers. So as I go ahead and I test this out, this is going to help me decide where do I want to place the designer paper onto the front covers. Because I'm going to put a piece of burlap embellishment on this. And I want it to lay at a certain point, so that's why I'm being kind of particular about where all of this goes. This embellishment, you're going to see it here in just a minute, has a crisscross stitch in it. So I want it to lay as carefully as I could. Now, I just put in one little strip of tape there to hold this just while I went in and laid in this burlap piece that I told you about. See the little crisscross? stitch down it and then it has those little white borders on each side. Well, I wanted that border to lie just outside where I was going to join the spine. So I was pretty particular about where this went. I remeasured, laid it all out, decided yes, I like it. So now it's time to glue down that front cover. The fabric tack worked fine for that. That was perfect. It, it's holding just fine. All right, so now we're gonna test this out and it worked. Now here I am coming back in, fixing this again. Why didn't I decide that I really needed a different glue by now? I'm not sure, but I didn't. So we, we just keep fixing. Here is where the Gorilla Glue is a must. I would recommend here double score tape or double sided tape on both the book cover and the book spine. Okay, then I would recommend going Gorilla Glue right here on this step and not the fabric tack because it just doesn't hold up the way I wanted it to. So if I do this book again, which I might because I really, really did like the way this turned out, I will go straight to Gorilla Glue, straight to Gorilla Glue for that. All right, here I am. We're putting in the uh, designer paper now on the back cover. I'm just using a stamping block to flatten that all out. I do have a roller, but my stamp block was there. So I just decided to use that. Again, I wish I had used Gorilla Glue there. All right, so here I am adding more of the uh, double-sided tape. I'm going ahead now and putting the paper in on the inside of my book covers. Now, a bit of a spoiler alert. I did get this book fixed, so it's it holds. Okay, so it's all great now, but you'll see later that I did go in with Gorilla Glue 
and fix it because I put it in the video so you would see that. Here I'm using a little matte medium. I'm putting my little sparkly dragonflies down on some cereal box and I'm sticking them under a stamp block just to hold that down till it dries. Okay, so here's attempt number two to hold this. Here we go. See how it's pulling away? And the cereal box is pulled away now from that little bit of craft. So I tried to E6000. Okay, and this time I put clamps down. All right, these are binder clips. I just, and I use those later on. And what I'm telling you is I set that aside for, um, <laughs> for about 24 hours to see if I could get that now to hold. While that's sitting over there, I'm coming in and I'm scoring out the pockets that I'm going to put in. Again, these little pockets and little pieces of ephemera are from Victoria Designs, linked below if you're interested in finding all of those. So going on with my story about the dragonflies as I, as I uh, scruff up these pieces and ink them, um, like I was telling you, I was down at Midwest and my horse was just enamored with them. He was just, it was hard to keep, keep his focus um, because he was just so enamored with them. And I thought, well, I understand because they're, they look like insects, but they look like birds and they look like fairies and they're just so fun. So now I've decided, you know, yes, I, I really do like dragonflies and I'm not much of an insect person I've never really been much of a butterfly person even so it's interesting that I would be so captivated with dragonflies but I am all right back to the project um I'm just adding a little bit of script to these little pieces these are retired stamps from close to my heart they are definitely well loved, that is for sure. You can tell by how dark the stamps are, but they still stamp beautifully. So a great investment. All right, so here I'm just gonna sort of uh, scruff up the sides here a little bit, ink them a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of music, because I have to add music to everything. Um, just to that little tag there, and now I'm gonna add it to this little piece of paper that has little dragonflies on it. Okay, here are some of the pages and I've printed them in double page fashion. And these are going to be the covers for my signatures. So I'm gonna have three signatures in this book. Now, in case you're wondering what is a signature, the signature is simply the section of a book. And in this particular book, I'm going to have three signatures. Each signature section is going to have a cover that consists of a double page that is a little thicker um, paper than the rest. Now, here I'm showing you that I cut my sponges apart. They're just circles, and I just cut them apart. And uh, that's what I use usually to ink my books and pages. Here I'm adding a little bit of double-sided tape with a little bit of fabric tack to add a little piece of uh, trim here to the side of this page that's going to go on to one of the signature covers. This particular one creates a little pocket and uh, See how it's fitting on the outside of this piece and it will fold over then and create a signature cover. I did some machine sewing machine stitching on some of these pieces. When I do that, I um, tie off the ends and uh, if I can, I'll run some tape or glue and you know, on the back side of it, just to make sure that the stitching stays in place. Here's a little piece that was with the ephemera that I just folded over the edge, adding a little bit of trim here to this pretty piece here with the roses. This paper is so pretty, so pretty. I, I love the colors. I'm pulling another old stamp set 
from Close to My Heart. And I'm going to add a little quote here. You see me double dipping on my stamp pads there because I wanted a pinkish brown color. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece in. But then I remembered, ooh, I did not distress this piece and I really wish I had. So I just use my fingernail here and go along it and give it just a little distress. It's a sneaky way to get a little distress in there after the glue's already on there. Now I'm gonna pull a metal key and um, I like keys. I think keys are pretty. This is a heavy key. So I'm gonna pull some E6000 for this. Whenever I glue metal to paper or metal to just about anything, I really like using E6000. And that completes my first signature cover. So now we're going to move on to signature cover number two. On this one, I'm taking this little piece of ephemera, this little card, and I'm going to hole punch it twice with my crop -a dial I'm going to put eyelets in and then just run some gold metallic thread and tie in a knot. Once I've got that knot tied in, I'll go ahead and glue that down and add a little sparkly gem just for some interest. I chose to go with a blue to sort of match that pretty flower down in the right hand corner. I'm turning now to the outside of that second signature cover and um, adding a pocket to this piece of paper. Now I have stitched a little tag there. You can see the zigzags on the back and I'm going to be sure that I pull those threads out. I like hanging threads in my books. I think it's a fun little addition. Some people do not. They think it looks messy and that's cool. Just clip them away if you don't like them. Or if you don't want to stitch at all, you can just glue it in or paper clip it in. I've clipped in some tags also in this book. Adding just a little bit of turquoise lace here to the pocket. Now here's some stitching that I've done on this and you can see that I do tie it off here. And uh, again, I'm not going to clip my threads because I like them. I think it adds to it. I glue the page down and move on to the next signature. Here I'm adding just a little collage of pieces and decide I want to go with a little bit of sparkle trim. Again, there's that brown bronze color that I love so much with uh, turquoise and blue especially. So I just sort of uh, add all of this in with a little bit of fabric tack. You could use double-sided tape for this also. I like using fabric tack because I can pull it back up and just stick that tape right underneath there. Yes, fabric tack is also very useful for when you change your mind. Here I changed my mind and decided, oh, I want to add a little, a little doodad here. So I came in and I punched a hole. I just pulled it up because you can do that if you decide quickly. And I'm just adding this little piece in and uh, spreading the little prongs out and then I'll just glue it back into place. I wrapped a little gold thread around just to add a little more interest. So again, I'm getting my fabric tack out and I'm going to add that pocket to the inside back cover of the book at this point. And I'm gonna line that up carefully because it matches exactly what's already on the paper there. I just cut it so it would match and it worked out quite well. This is a page where I did something that I didn't like and I pulled it apart, but I am going to share with you what I did that I kept in the book. Here's the paper that I cut the little dragonflies from, and I'm going to use that as the background for this other piece of paper. So I'm sticking that on there so that I can use it sort of just as a little background along the edge there. And then I will go ahead and adhere that to um, a page in the book later. Okay, these little paper clips. These are just little paper clips. I had a white one, a yellow one, and a green one. And I decided I wanted gold paper clips, but I didn't 
I'll be honest, I didn't want to buy any. So uh, what I did is I just put a little bit of this gold paint down, got a brush, and I did a couple of coats. I did not try to make it look perfect. In fact, I tried to make it look as if it was sort of used a little bit and old. And uh, I really liked it on the blue and the green much better than on the white. It really had a fun effect. As you can see in the background, I also used that gold paint while I had it out to splatter the lower left-hand corner of this page. Now I'm bringing my uh, dragonfly back again from Casual Friday Stamps. And I'm going to just stamp him on the edge of this page with a little bit of this cashmere. Now I'm adding a little bit of a pink blush to that cashmere. And you can see that I've stamped them up there. I've also gone ahead and distressed these pages uh, with some ink. I glued in the little pocket that we saw earlier. And you might note that I have a little bit of that gold ink around the top edge of that. I'm coming in with that music stamp and I'm just sort of putting it around the edge of the page just to give it a little interest and I'm going to go ahead and just ink around the edges also. Now this was kind of fun. I took an envelope and I distressed a little bit but mostly just inked around, put in that little strip of paper on the right side and then this little piece of ephemera I'm putting in over that side. Sorry about the light shining on the glass. It won't be very long, I promise. Here I'm taking those binder clips and I'm putting pages now into the systems, all right, those system covers. There they are. I did not go through every single page and all the stamping I did on every page. Please check out the flip through to see all of those. Okay, here comes my next uh-oh moment. I had a few in this book. So here's the next one. Again, when I cut this on my Cricut, the holes were already in the spine and it cut them, which I thought was great. And then I figured out, oh no, my crocodile is not, ha not long enough to go in there. So what I did is I'm testing this out. I'm putting the little eyelet through a hole with cereal box. And whoa, I forgot, I work on top of a glass mat. I did remove it. Whew, no problem there, I did remove it. So I'm putting this down now on a mat that has some give to it. I'm taking my hammer and I'm hammering in the eyelet and that does work. So that worked out just, it worked out pretty well, pretty well. I'll admit a couple of them didn't want to hold. So even my trusty hammer there couldn't get them in through all those layers on a couple of them. So what I did is I just added a little Gorilla Glue and it worked out fine. Here we are working on the spine. And what I've done is I've marked the holes with a pencil onto a piece of paper. And now I'm figuring out exactly where I want them on my three different systems. I'm just poking holes through lining it up exactly with the crease. And then I stick my little pokey tools. I know they have a name, but I'll just call it the pokey tools. <laughs> I'm putting them through. I'm poking the holes. Now I did this for all three systems. Keep in mind, all of the pages have already been put in to those system covers and they are all held together with those binder clips. Now I'm taking very heavy thread. I use oboe thread uh, because I play oboe and so that is really strong thread. I run it through the back of the book, through the middle of the book, right? Through the middle of that system, run it back through that hole, and then I just tie a knot. Now I tie this as tight as I can do it. And that's why you want some pretty durable thread here. Because when you pull this tight to hold that system in place, you're gonna break regular thread. 
So use something like um, rug thread, you know, the kind of thread that you sew uh, rugs together. Or uh, if you know any oboe players, ask to borrow some of this thread because it works great. And it comes in all these great colors. So I just chose to use this brown. Now, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to leave these strings long also, and I will use them then to attach some beads. All right, here we are. I'm stuck, sticking my little threads back into the book there. And you can see those three different systems in there. You can see how they are attached there in my front and back of the book. So now what I've done is I, I just found this in my stash. I forget where I got it. I'm so sorry. I can't even guide you to the place. Okay. This is my mood board. My favorite colors. My favorite things. There's my dragonfly. I'm going to try really hard to detach it without ripping up my mood board. I did it. Yay. I'm so excited I did that. It's from uh, Jewelry Basics. I'm getting my Gorilla Glue out now to attach this to the front cover. Now, I told you that I use E6000 for all my metal, but I thought, you know what? I'm attaching to this um, it's ephemera on the outside, this fiber. I'm just gonna go with Gorilla Glue. And I had my Gorilla Glue out because I wanted to fix some other little spots on the book. Well, here we are. We are nearing the end of this book journal video. And uh, all I have left to do now is just add some little doodads to the strings on the spine. I really enjoyed making this book and I will probably make another one off of this pattern. I will just make those changes that we talked about in the video. Hey, questions, comments, anything, uh, please leave them below. Truly appreciate your input and your questions and your visit to Scrappy Horses. I invite you to come on over again and watch the journal flip through and I'll see you over at that video. Have a great week.